By doing these mod corner videos, I've been kind of fortunate in the sense that I'm never really forced into covering a mod simply because my entire channel is revolved around mods. The other benefit I guess is that I can be more selective and take a look at mods that get highly recommended and one such mod is Arcane Dimensions, a sort of map pack for Quake that goes above and beyond anything you've probably seen in other mods of its kind. Raising the bar and the ceiling quite literally for what you expect from level design, it's a compilation of a dozen or so different maps, some of which even have their own backstories, with the somewhat recently released Forgotten Sepulchre really being the star of the show. Now, the mod was originally released around early 2016, with a hub added in during an update in late 2016, around the time when most people were probably busy playing other games to even notice. Aside from just being an absolute cornucopia of gigantic levels, another big thing that Arcane Dimensions does is how it changes the behaviour of enemies, updating their appearance and adding in entirely new enemies on top of that as well as a few new weapons. But also more importantly by changing the way the shotguns handle by turning the pellets into projectiles, removing the entire hit scanning element of the combat entirely. This has had a couple of massive effects on the game and the shooting. First off, this can allow for a much more higher concentration of the grunt type enemies, of which there's now also numerous new variants. Whereas formerly when you were fighting these guys, you'd need to break their line of sight to avoid taking damage, a skillful player can now take on a large group of them quite easily as long as you're mobile and aware of your surroundings. What it's also done is strangely made the shotgun more useful than the double-barreled shotgun. Seeing as every time you fire the shotguns now, there's going to be a slight delay between when the weapon is fired and when the pellets hit their intended target. This factor, along with the increased spread of the double-barreled shotgun from it using up twice the amount of ammo, combined with the mobility of certain enemies means the shotgun is a far more viable choice in combat. I'd even argue the shotgun outweighs the usefulness of the nail gun at times as well, especially considering its accuracy from longer ranges, and the fact that it uses a single shell per shot along with the increased ammo capacity for shotgun shells. When you get your hands on the grenade and rocket launcher, you'll also notice the difference in the hitboxes, they're now a lot smaller, which becomes pretty damn obvious to people who've spent a lot of time with the original Quake. At first I even thought my rockets were passing through enemies and that it was some kind of bug, but it's just been reduced a fair bit, meaning you can't really half-ass your shots at enemies and hope for the best anymore. There's also the inclusion of new enemies like spiders and skull wizards, both of which have been ripped from Hexen 2, and this adds a unique and original element to Quake's combat. Aside from the fact a lot of these enemies have been redesigned, they can now also be immune to different weapons, something that's portrayed visually when weapon particles hit that particular enemy's hitbox. What this all means is that even for veteran Quake fans, there's going to be a bit of a learning curve when you're first playing through the mod, at least a little bit of teething in a sense, as it's going to take a short while before you're able to get up to speed with the slightly altered mechanics and fall into that autopilot mode where you're effortlessly dodging ogres and death knights. And yeah, look, I understand a lot of these models are taken from other mods, but if you haven't got your head wedged up Quake's modding community's asshole, well, a lot of this stuff is going to be fresh and new. So what is Arcane Dimensions all about? Well, look, it's kind of simple. When you load up the mod, you're dropped into this little hub area where you can access the first bunch of maps. Once you finish any of these, which could take anywhere from 5 to 10 minutes or upwards of 30 or 40, it drops you right back into the hub and lets you select another map and do it all over again. Portals separate both of the hubs, all of which contain their own unique maps to play, and even the architecture and layout of these hubs is impressive enough. But once you get into the maps themselves, you'll really start to appreciate the time and effort that's gone into making these environments come to life. Some of the environments on offer in this mod really kind of defy what you'd expect to see in the Quake engine. It's the kind of thing you'd see someone making in a more modern engine with the intent of making it look old school. But the fact this thing runs on the Quake engine is just pure black magic. There's creepy looking tombs, a necromancer's keep, a temple atop a snow-capped mountain which just looks phenomenal, and all these bizarre dilapidated castles and European themed villages. The one factor that kind of rings true across the board is just how every one of them has this immense sense of polish and refinement. You're not going to see any kind of bugs or game breaking errors the entire time, and the flow for each of the levels as you collect keys and explore every nook and cranny never seems to dwindle or lose its pacing. You're just always moving onwards, fighting a new group of enemies as you collect a box of nails or an armor pickup and getting into these immense scraps with an insurmountable bunch of bad guys. This kind of design encapsulates layouts from that 90s period of gaming, where the maps all have this kind of circular formation. I mean, you feel like you're moving in a singular direction, but you always end up back where you started in one way or another, just with access to a new area. It's really in stark contrast to a lot of modern shooters where you're just moving in one direction pretty much the entire time. 
Also, the fact they've really been able to push the engine to its limits here means you're going to see a lot more scripted sequences, much more verticality, polygon counts on the architecture, and a higher enemy count without any kind of slowdown or impact on performance. I don't know if I could even talk about all these maps in a single video, but there's definitely a few key standouts. A personal favourite has to be the remake of E1M1 from Doom that they've added in, which does a pretty good job of putting a spin on the original. But the Forgotten Sepulchre is really the star of the show. It has to be one of the biggest maps I think I've ever seen in a Quake mod. And for my first time playthrough, really taking my time and exploring as much as possible, it took me just under an hour to complete it. And that's with missing numerous secrets and not even killing every single enemy on the map. I kind of went into this one expecting to get lost really quickly and lose my way. I'd heard about how big the whole thing was and initially it is kind of overwhelming but there's so many subtle landmarks and unique aspects to the architecture that you never happen to find yourself going in a circle or really losing your way. The odd arrow on the wall literally pointing the way forward and the abundance of shortcuts you can unlock to make traversal from previously explored areas more accessible means the map never seems to drag on despite its size. It's also challenging as all, shit. In fact, it should really be said that on the whole, you can expect this mod to kick your ass, especially if you're not all that used to the fundamentals of how Quake handles and performs. Most of the combat in the game is usually fair to the player. By that, I mean if you die, it's usually your fault. Like you didn't avoid an ogre's grenade in time, or you got sloppy and got cornered by a bunch of knights, or maybe you just had a brief lapse of motor skills and fired a rocket too close to a nearby enemy and kamikaze. It happens. The addition of making the shotguns fire projectiles does make certain aspects of the shooting more challenging too, but not in an irritating way, just in the sense that you really need to be aware of how the weapons handle and change your shooting style accordingly. Arcane Dimensions is also one of those mods that throws a couple dozen enemies at you during some of the heavier combat sections, but it always makes sure you've got enough ammo or health to get by. I never found myself having to scrimp by an ammunition or tiptoe around enemies because I was too low on health to engage them. In fact, during certain sections, the maps even respawn health and ammo to make sure you're stocked up enough and don't run too low during those moments when you're gonna need it the most. Now, there are moments when it can seem to drag on a bit too long, and truth be told, the tougher enemies in the game are the definition of bullet sponges. Death Knights and Shamblers, for instance, are a real pain in the ass, as are the Vores with their insanely high health pool and their magically homing fire pods that seem to be able to follow you around to no end. But most of the challenge is genuine and fair, and like I said before, if you die, it's generally going to be your fault, not the game's. So this is the point in the video where I'm supposed to start talking about things I hated or disliked and everyone watching the video rolls their eyes because I'm given an opinion that differs to their own. As a minor annoyance, I don't really like it how they take away your weapons every time you finish a map. I know this was done for balancing, but I never felt I got to play around all that much with some of the new guns because I'd lose them 5 minutes later and just have to start from scratch. I don't like the inclusion of those annoying Lost Soul type enemies either. Lost Souls I think are objectively one of the most annoying motherfuckers from Doom and I don't see why they'd ever need to be brought across into Quake, it doesn't make them any less annoying. But honestly there's not really anything I didn't like about Arcane Dimensions. It's a Quake mod and a damn good one at that and considering the base of what the mod is based off is so solid, anything I could bring up would just be nitpicking, making me look like some kind of pedantic asshole. I spent a lot of time chatting with one of the authors of the mod on Discord and it's pretty obvious when I was talking to him that this thing is really a labour of love more than anything else. I think the fact I came in at the tail end of the whole thing also means I got to play the best version of the mod available from the get-go and that definitely helped the experience to be a positive one as well. People who complain about the state of FPS games in the industry at the moment need to take a breather and check out a mod like this. It doesn't reinvent the wheel or anything like that, but it's not trying to. It's just taking the formula for what makes old school level design and shooting so good and really dialing it up to 11. My experience with Quake maps and mods isn't all that fast, but I've played enough of them to sort out the good from the bad, and Arcane Dimensions is definitely up there with the absolute best of them. Get a prepubescent boy to play this mod and within hours his balls will have dropped and his chest will have sprouted a manly mane. And for people who grew up loving Quake and still enjoy it to this day, Arcane Dimensions is a fantastic reminder as to why that is.